When I was about 18, I worked as a nursing assistant on a surgical floor. We got a range of patients that varied from gallbladders to knee replacements. I worked with another assistant, and we split the floor in half. She got one hallway, and I got the other. She went on break, so I responded to the call lights in both halls. One of her patients rung out, so I went to help. The lady's son stepped out while I assisted her to the bedside commode. I came out and told him I was done and he could go back in. Instead, he chose to talk with me. We exchanged some small talk and he went back into the room when his mother called for him. The other assistant came back and I continued working. I went to chart at the nurse's station and the son came out and began chatting with me again. I didn't think much of it. It was the middle of the night, nothing good was on TV at this time, and I assumed he was just bored. I got up to attend my patients and he followed me, asking lots of questions. How old was I? If I was going to school? How long I had worked there? He even waited outside patients' rooms till I came out. I should have mentioned earlier that this guy did not have the usual creeper vibe. He was a clean-cut guy, perhaps in his late twenties. He was charming and funny. I guess his appearance delayed my creeper sense, and I dismissed his behavior as being socially awkward. He continued to follow me and talk to me, and I tried to drop subtle hints that I had a boyfriend, although I didn't. Towards the end of my shift, he became a little more aggressive. He told me, well I guess I'll just have to kill him, referring to the boyfriend I spoke about. He said it with a laugh and then told me he would walk me to my car when my shift was over. He then left to check on his mother. At this point I was creeped out. It was the end of my shift and we gave reports to the day shift assistants. I had told my coworker what had happened with the son, so she checked the hallway before we left and we took a little known path to the parking garage. I went to bed when I got home and around noon the day shift nurse called me. She told me not to come in. She said the son had been asking about me. He asked when I worked, what my real name was. I put a nickname on my badge, and more personal info. When she wouldn't tell him, he asked the other nurses. His mom was going home that day, she said, so I could probably come back tomorrow. Tomorrow came, and my manager called. She told me to stay home the rest of the week. The son had sent flowers to the floor and had called every floor asking about me and when I worked. She said she didn't feel like it was safe for me to come back. Eventually he quit calling and I came back to work. About three months later I was watching the news. He had been arrested for rape and murder. So creepy son, let's not meet again. This happened 14 or 15 years ago. It was Super Bowl Sunday. The Ravens beat the hell out of the Giants, and I had spent the entire day waiting tables. I drank amazing amounts of coffee while I worked. That matters later, promise. After work, the Super Bowl was pretty much over, so I picked up a girl I was seeing and headed home. I worked in Shreveport, Louisiana, but lived 30 miles east of the city on Interstate 20. As soon as I merged onto the interstate, the multiple pots of coffee hit my bladder. I had to go, and right now. There was a rest area just east of Shreveport, and I was speeding and praying that I made it because peeing myself in front of a lady friend wasn't on the list of cool things to do. I made it to the rest area and Grace started laughing when she figured out why I wasn't talking anymore. I parked, jumped out and speed walked towards the bathroom. This rest area was very plain, just two cinder block rooms under a shared roof with a breezeway between the two. No welcome area or vending machines. There was a map of the state on a board under an awning, that's it. A guy stood in front of the map. I could see him when we pulled up. Whatever, he could ask for directions when I was done in the bathroom. I went past him at an almost run. 
but I could see him turn and start to follow me before he was out of my peripheral vision. The rumors about this particular rest area flew through my mind. Gay sex, robbery, rape, etc. I walked faster and entered the men's room. It was empty. I dove into a stall and started urinating. I heard the door open and the guy walked towards the stall I was in. He passed my stall and entered one a few past me. While I was still going, I pulled my knife out of my pocket and opened it. I was freaking out and felt like I would never stop peeing. I didn't want to be assaulted or robbed in a damn men's room, especially while peeing. Finally, I got done and faced my next issue, leaving the men's room. I tried to slide the lock quietly, but of course, it got stuck halfway before slamming open. I looked down and didn't see any feet, so I opened the door partially. No one was standing outside of my stall, so I opened the door all the way. There was a mirror that ran the length of the room, an industrial metal mirror that was wavy and distorted. I looked in the mirror and saw him standing in the open door of one of the stalls. He had his erection in his hand and was stroking it slowly. The motion was what drew my attention first. I looked at his face and this is what scared me the most. Not the creepy following, not the public masturbation. His face had no expression. His eyes were either dark brown or black. His face was completely blank. I held up my knife and turned it so I was sure he had seen it. We kept our eyes on each other for what seemed like minutes but was probably seconds. Then I walked out of the men's room. I ran to my car and locked the door. Grace had her cell phone out, ready to call the Louisiana State Police if I wasn't out in another minute. I got out of there as fast as possible and took a long, complicated way home. A few years later, the state demolished that rest stop for activity like that. Every time I drive past where that place was, I have to look. I don't use interstate rest stops after dark to this day. So creepy, scary, rapey guy, let's make that the closest we ever come to meeting. So let me start off by saying, I move around a lot in between SoCal and Arizona. In December of 2015, I was still living in Southern California at my grandma's apartments. I had gotten a seasonal job at Toys R Us to do something with my time and to learn some people skills. I'm a 24 year old girl and have some pretty extreme social anxiety and find it really hard to talk to people. So I figured this job would help. Another important thing to mention, my grandmother is on a government program with reduced housing cost and has been in a two bedroom apartment ever since my grandfather passed away. But due to the annual check at her complex, she is supposed to be the only inhabitant of her dwelling. So technically I was not supposed to be there but she liked the help and company, and I liked being rent free. Now, since I wasn't supposed to be there, I technically had to sneak around and most definitely couldn't park on the parking grounds for the complex as it would draw attention. There was a cemetery across the street from the complex and then half a mile of houses leading down the street next to the cemetery where most of the visitors parked, including myself. I was getting free rent and staying with my grandma, which was awesome to me. Even if it meant I had to park half a mile away, I didn't mind the walk. So all was well for a few months from when I got the job in October. Eventually, they started putting me on night shifts, which I definitely did not mind since I tend to be a night owl. Also, if you've ever been on closing shift at any retail store, you'll know you can easily get an hour or two of overtime after the store closes, doing reshop during the holiday season. It was early December at the time. I ended up getting off work past 2 a.m. Around this hour at this time of year, in this part of SoCal, 
the mist gets unbearably thick, to the point of having to drive 30 miles per hour down the freeway with brights on, and still being unable to see a foot or two in front of your car. Tonight was one of those nights. I wasn't too bothered by it at that time, but it does set off my anxiety a little bit. So by the time I got home, it nearly took 20 minutes to find a parking space, and I was pretty anxious. Of course, with my luck, I parked at the very end of the half-mile stretch. Now, it's kind of a tradition of mine to get out of the car, close the door and linger near my car for a minute while I audibly stretch a bit and sometimes complain, fuck, today sucked. It's just a little habit thing I do, and tonight was no different. Immediately after, I tucked my purse under my arm, turned on my phone flashlight and stuck it in front of my face to see where I was going because the fog was so thick I couldn't see anything. I had walked in this weather many times before, so I knew my way home. A straight shot walk for half a mile and a sharp left turn at the end of the cemetery, then crossing the street and into the gated complex. So I was on my merry way until I heard it. A loud, almost obnoxious cough and footsteps. My alert mode set in and I instantly started walking faster and trying to be quieter about my movements. Call me paranoid, but I've had a fair number of let's not meet moments and I certainly wasn't keen about meeting the stranger walking behind me especially given the fact that I can't see a foot in front of my face even with the street lights and my phone flashlight. This continues for a few minutes, with an occasional cough behind me, and then I hear a whistle. The kind cat collars do, which bewilders me because one, you can't see shit, and two, since you can't see shit in this weather, I assume he is purposely intimidating me at this point. I give up on walking and break into a run. The steps behind me break into a full-blown run also, and I hear panting. Clearly the dude isn't in the best shape. Neither am I, but the run didn't wind me as bad. Now I'm speed walking next to the cemetery, and for some godforsaken reason, my panicked mind tells me it would be better to duck into the cemetery and hide instead of walk the straight shot home. Had there been no fog, I would have a clear view of my grandma's apartment from the area in the cemetery where I stood. I quickly hid by crouching behind the entrance posts to the cemetery gates, and I knew I fucked up, because his footsteps stopped too. And I could tell he knew I was hiding, because he couldn't hear me anymore. I crouched there for what seemed like ten minutes, too scared to turn on my phone for fear of him being close enough to see the light and find me and too scared to make a run for it for fear that he was intently listening out for me. I had figured out he was standing probably five to ten feet from where I was, which was confirmed when after a few minutes I heard his voice say, I know you're there, sweetheart. I heard the distinct sound of a lighter being struck and then smelled cigarette smoke. I figured the dude was focused on his cigarette, and I made a run for it across the cemetery, somehow not tripping over any graves, all while intently trying to listen behind me. The cemetery's main entrance has wrought iron fencing, but the back and right end is wooden, and serves as a separator between the cemetery and the backyard of various houses, and the other side, which is in front of my grandmother's apartment is chain link. There is no other entrance or exit to the cemetery, but I know the chain link fence doesn't go all the way to the ground, so I laid on my stomach, pushed the fence out and up, wriggled across and ran directly to my grandma's house, pounding on her door until she opened. I don't know how this dude found me. He must have been standing around nearby as I parked and heard me complain to myself loudly when I got out of the car. But either way, that was one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had. So creepy stalker guy in South San Diego, who likes to come out of the mist and terrify women at 3 a.m., let's never meet again. Hey. 
At the end of last year, my dad had total knee replacement surgery. He's younger than a lot of people who usually have this surgery, and because of this, he had more soft tissue damage than most. Due to the amount of pain he was in, he had to be on painkillers for longer. The pharmacy that I went to for his prescriptions decided that he was going through them too fast, even though he was taking them like his doctor recommended and denied him his prescriptions a couple of times. I understood why, especially because there was a known drug problem in the town we lived in. But it was hard seeing him in that much pain and waiting on the doctor to contact the pharmacy for us. So I decided I would start staggering his prescriptions at that pharmacy, a Walgreens, and the CVS a few blocks away. I had been really busy running errands the day that I went to pick up his prescriptions, so I hadn't had time to walk my dog like I usually do. I felt bad about this, so I decided to take her along as a special treat and to wear her out a little bit. My dog is a 70-pound Staffordshire Terrier, a pit bull breed, and one of the reasons I adopted her is because I'm a single female and I feel safer having her along when I go walking or I'm home alone. So I get to the pharmacy and talk to the lady at the window. She says it will be a few minutes. My dog is laying down in the front seat, content as could be. Then, as I'm waiting, I notice a car drive really slowly alongside me and stop about 10, maybe 15 feet from my car. It was pretty beat up and I vaguely remember it being red. What instantly put me on edge is the man driving the car. He was your typical skinhead, drug addict looking asshole. You know the type, bald head, hollow cheeks, neck tattoos, the whole nine yards. He had his window rolled down and was staring straight at me. The guy wasn't just sitting in his seat looking in my direction. I could have maybe written that off as just passing curiosity. Instead, he had his whole upper body turned so he could stare. We sat there for what felt like forever, but it really couldn't have been more than 30 seconds. He knew I noticed him. I don't see how he couldn't, because I was doing the whole deer in headlights routine. He just kept staring at me really intently. Mentally, I was running through all sorts of scenarios, like the guy following me home or trying to get into my car. I don't know if or how he knew I was picking up prescription painkillers, but that's the only reason I could think of for his behavior. Maybe the pharmacy tech tipped him off. Then, I'm not sure if she was just getting stiff or if she could tell that I was completely freaked out, but my dog decided to sit up in the seat and turned to look out the window, right at Mr. Creeper. I swear the guy's eyes bugged out of his head when he saw her. Like I said, she's a fairly large pit bull mix, and she looks like she could do some damage if she wanted to. The guy glared at me for a couple more seconds before he slowly drove off, still staring until he turned to the corner. Finally, the woman returned to the window with my dad's prescription, and I quickly paid and got the fuck out of there. I was constantly looking in my rear view mirror on the way home to see if I was being followed Luckily, I wasn't. I'm almost certain that that man was going to try to do something to me. Otherwise, he wouldn't have freaked out when he saw my dog. Needless to say, my baby girl got as many treats as she wanted when we got home. And she got to go on a lot more car rides to the pharmacy after that. Hey guys, and... Sorry, my neighbor's leaving, I guess. Hey guys, and... Hey guys and ladies. Are you kidding me? Nothing's ever going on unless I'm doing something. Hey guys and... This is unbelievable. <clears throat> hey 
Hey guys and ladies, thanks for... What now? Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell... There's no fucking water around here. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story, email me at the address in the description. Be good to animals, even people. I looked in the mirror and saw him standing in the open door of one of the stalls. He had his erection in his hand and was stroking it slowly. <laughs>